Alrighty, tubers. We're working on dual batteries. Yes. Yes, most excellent. So, um, I got this battery for about 10 bucks. I gave it to my cousin. I'm actually, I still own the money. I'm actually going to put some fuel on his truck. Um, anyway, I just got the battery for 10 bucks. This is actually a really good battery. Um, it was quote unquote bad from the owner of the Cummins, the extendable that we purchased um, a while ago, the, uh, the brown F-150 that we just put one of these motors in. So anyways, I got this battery and I've, uh, um, even for sitting outside in the rain and whatnot and being kind of abused, I uh, cleaned up the terminals and I went and got these cables from Napa. This one I bought off the shelf. It's like a 10 or 12 inch cable. And then I had these uh, five inch or six inch cables made up. Um, first of all, this is a temporary deal. I'm actually gonna buy a proper purpose built um, isolator for this. So anyways, I got this battery. Um, I went and cleaned up the terminals and and whatnot. And I uh, just made everything a lot cleaner. Um, I, um, and then wire brush everything, get all the dirt off. And then I bought these little, uh, they got some protectant soaked felt things I just put these in here to keep the bases from uh, rusting which is what they were doing it was getting some weird corrosion on these on th this one um, so and at a later time this is gonna get a weather seal I'm gonna put something in and and then another s piece here so that when they come down they keep water from getting on all the electrics so far I haven't had an issue but I would like to prevent one Anyways, I got this cable here and this and this other one here made up a two made up that and the terminals I think I was in for only about 30 bucks and I, there's a couple extra things I threw in there too so only 30 bucks and 10 bucks so 40 bucks into a dual battery setup and so I, I've done it I'll do it before and after here in a moment when this is all hooked up but I gotta tell you just this adding this little battery made all the difference in the world and you gotta crank it it's with two batteries it's it's a huge huge difference so we'll find out if this works um i i think it will um i'm gonna make this this is gonna be just zip tied here somewhere temporarily and then it'll have a switched ground which will tie into here so yeah um anyways i got two batteries here set in uh later when i can afford it i'm gonna have a battery tray um from I think it was uh, I forgot it was one of those sites you can get stuff for like Broncos and F-150s. Um, maybe I'll, I'll if I don't forget I'll post a link uh, to it. They have a for like 85 bucks they have a whole battery tray you can put here and it'll fit two Optima batteries. So I'll end up doing two Optima batteries and that'll be pretty freaking awesome. So anyways, I put my crappy battery, not my crappy but my I don't care too much about battery on this inner side. And then my main primary battery is a little bit more protected from the elements. Um, and I've also cleaned off the insides of these and the posts. And I also put the new things in here. And I'm also taking these plates and flipping them around so they bite into this more. But based on how cheap having the cables made up, I'm probably going to end up going back to Napa and having them make me a new power wire, but a thicker gauge. And the same thing with the ground. So I'll have two new cables with a permanent end on it. So that's something I'm going to look into doing later so we can get rid of these temporary uh, fixer-uppers. So, yeah. Um, I'm going to uh, just kind of pick away. I'm not really doing too much of a how-to, but more of a progress report type of video. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, yeah, Bob's your uncle. Now the other thing we have to be careful of is when we shut our hood that we don't zap or anything. But then again, I had my battery over here, so as long as we're low enough, I may actually take uh, some old heater hose, cut it up, and make a shield that goes over both of these and keeps some water and stuff from getting on them. So, anyways, yeah, I'm gonna get my heat gun and reform this cable here, make it nice and nice and purdy. Um, and then boom, Bob's your uncle. I may actually move this in inboard somewhere. I don't know. I'm not too worried about the ground, but the negative or the positive. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'll update you as I do this. So I just got a few things left to do. Just check uh, hood clearance one. I think we'll be good. Uh, I got to strap these things on. I think I'm gonna get a ratchet strap and just just for now. 
We're going to have to strap it down and make a little shield for, for these two here. Um, right now, this thing here, he's going to have a switched ground. So I'm going to actually physically bolt this spade to the solenoid. This will get mounted later. Again, this is a temporary thing. You know, a lot of my things are kind of temporary and then I'll end up doing it right and making it nice. <clears throat> and uh, so, yeah, I got these hooked up. They're separated right now. And then uh, this is just our little ground. Now, this should work okay for uh, continuous. Eh, some, you know, some of these, you know, they're not, really not supposed to use them continuously, but this might be okay. I mean, it doesn't take a whole lot to activate that, and I don't think it'll burn it out. Um, but I think it'll be okay. Um, if anything, it'll be good to get me jump to start me. You know. So it's, this battery is here to jump start this thing. It's freaking awesome. So, yeah. So anyway, really this disconnected. Um, I'm going to unplug the injection pump. I actually need to crimp that down some more and make that snug around. That would be driving around and blah, and you're like, damn it. all the terminals and stuff. I clean my cables. That breaks pretty good. Fans on. So now we're going to connect both batteries. Now that's what I'm talking about. That's, that's freaking fantastic. We got the same voltage, we're charging. That's that's awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna go see if I can hunt down an isolator. For right now, I think I'm gonna have to leave them disconnected. Actually, right now I have them connected, but without the thing. This is actually not a good idea because one battery is different than the other, so they're gonna scavenge. So I wouldn't do this for very long. Um, but I have them both connected there. That's disconnected. So I got both batteries right now. I'm gonna go see if I can't somewhere get one, an isolator or a relay, a 500 amp relay for this purpose. Um, that way I can switch it on and off. And I, I, ideally I would like to have it tied into my um, switched ground here. So yeah. Um, yeah, for right now, that'll work. I, I'll have to remember to disconnect this when I come back home and tape it off. But that is there. Um, if it decides to get really cold, which right now I can start with one battery, no problem. But if it dips down in the mid 20s, that's when I start to need a second battery to crank this faster. Because the faster this can crank, the more heat it can generate to ignite. And also helps the injection pump build up more pressure, so it'll be able to fire. So, um, anyways, I need to strap this down. I had to move my HID ballast. I'm going to end up mounting them. I think that's about all the slack I got. I'm going to mount them about like this. So i got to get the screwdriver and just run that in and uh, we'll be good to go. So let's just verify that that works. I think I still got the keys in the ignition. So the fan is on full throttle right now. Yeah, I like that a lot. That's fantastic. Now I'm also running a uh, 5W40 motor oil on this. 
So it uh, also is easier for it to crank that way, having a thinner oil. Um, so that's cool. I like that a lot. Yeah, it cranks def that definitely cranks a lot better. Um, the other thing I want to do for, for my upgrade is I'm going to get a, a 94 amp alternator for this, like the one we put on the extendable. And I'm also going to upgrade the wire. I'm actually going to add one instead of this kind of thin wire here that eventually gets reduced down to this red wire here. I'm going to have a nice thick cable come off of here, run down and up into here. So it'll have the factory wire still in there, but it'll have an additional uh, positive on there. So we'll get a, a lot of, it'll be able to flow a lot of current to the, the primary battery as well as this one here. So uh, this is a cool little upgrade. Those two little batteries fit within that void there and these clear the post. When this comes down, there's at least that much room. And then when I get my, I'm gonna get a strap here and lock this down. And then uh, we'll be good to go. So I'm gonna f locate that, mount, remount my ballast there, and uh, we're good to go. All right, tube. So I drove this around. Looks like I got that battery nicely charged up and and whatnot. It's everything's running great. Um, the voltage stayed pretty good, no issues. Um, the only thing is I did take that little relay I had in here. Um, that's a case grounded unit and what it tends to do is get kind of hot, which it did. And so um, the way that's set up, it's just not going to work for my use. So I've thrown it back in the parts bitch box and I've, uh, I've actually went and ordered a non-case grounded unit that's um, um, gonna work perfect for this. Uh, the guy was very helpful. He's a master diesel tech and blah, blah, blah. And he's done dual battery setups out the wazoo. So he suggested um, to use, a, it, it looks like a starter relay, kind of like this, but it's more for a continuous use. And in fact, it's uh, for a, um, I think it's for a Dodge truck, um, it's actually for the uh, grid heater um, but yeah that uh, you just supply a, a ground to it which is what I wanted to do anyway so if I supply this to it it grounds it and then it uh, it just clicks on and connects these two so I'm getting that tomorrow and I'll install that and uh, I'll make a video on it so you guys can see um, how everything works and and whatnot um, I might, I'm, I'm, I, I want to mount this a little bit better, but I think this is just going to do for now, keep it from flopping around and hopping out or whatever, but I think this will work for right now. Um, but yeah, so I got these two kind of zip tied together and taped just so that I could, while I'm driving around, that this, gets, this gets charged and whatnot. But the whole idea, and even my YouTube visitor, uh, Joseph, who came by today, um, uh, I met. He, he thought it was very uh, an awesome idea, and I think it'll work great. And what what I'm going for, and I may have mentioned this earlier in the video, but I'm gonna say it again. What I'm going for is an automatic battery connect disconnect. So when I flip my key on, or put my key on, um, this relay here is tied into the circuit for the alternator, um, and what that's gonna do is. Uh, um, that sends power to this relay. Not only does the alternator get powered up, but it sends power to this. It turns on my vacuum pump, but since this is on a ground circuit, this here, when it gets switches on, this gets grounded out right to the battery, and it's hooked up here. So once I turn my key on, this grounds out, or this turns on, and grounds this wire out, this will go right to my the little dude. Hit once he gets grounded out, he flips over, Boom, automatic battery connect. So if you drain, like this is my primary battery, the red one. If this gets drained, you flip the switch on, and I think they need six volts minimum to run. So let's say if this was just completely dead, we got like maybe eight, nine volts out of it. You flip the switch, that thing will automatically click over. And once it clicks over, they both these are connected and, and you're good to go. So. I, I'm calling this the, uh, this is the automatic uh, jump start. So if you do drain the battery, you probably won't ever know that it was dead. You might notice it's cranked slower, but at least if you left your lights on, it wouldn't be an issue. 
Um, also, if anybody's noticed that my belt's been squeaking, I actually, um, when I had the old belt, I was kind of stupid and I sprayed belt ease or belt dressing on this and it made it worse and I think there was a coating left on this. So I took some uh, uh, like 500 grit sandpaper and while this is running I just laid it on there and smoothed it out, polished it up. So it's, it's starting to stop squeaking now. It's getting rid of that stuff. I think there's a little bit on the belt. This is my brand new belt. I might clean, wipe it down some more with like a degreaser just to get that residue off and it'll stop squeaking. Other than that, that's our dual battery setup for right now. We're gonna finish it up tomorrow. Uh, well, actually, it won't be finished. It'll, this, this will be temporarily set up. When it's fully done, I'll have my 94 amp alternator. I'll have the thicker wire going off the back to here. And then um, I'll have two red tops. Oh, and a battery tray. Oh, it's gonna be nice. I, I, I'm really happy about my little battery electrical system upgrade. This truck loves it. So I'm gonna tape that end off and tuck it away somewhere. And then uh, tomorrow we'll pr uh, fin I'll finish that up. I'm going to eat dinner and relax the rest of the day.